Hello everyone, Victor is here, your organic chemistry tutor, and today I want to talk about the ACS style questions, looking at this question as an example. So if you are a chemistry student in a Northern American institution, chances are you are going to be taking the ACS final at the end of the second semester of your organic chemistry sequence. The ACS test is going to be a 70 question exam, where all questions are going to be multiple choice, and each question is going to have four options. It is a comprehensive comprehensive exam that is going to go over all topics from both semesters. And while it is a relatively hard exam, it is quite manageable if you have at least some grip on the material. Now, when it comes to the grading of the ACS exams, they are graded based on the national averages rather than your class average. And based on what I've seen in the past, you'll have to answer around 44, maybe 46 questions correctly to score an A, which is only around, what, 63%, I guess, but it's around 80% of the national percentile, which gives you a very good idea of how complex this test is and how difficult it can be. And if you think that you'll just use the, you know, your test-taking strategies that might have worked in other classes, I have bad news for you. The ACS exams, they are written in such a way that your regular common test-taking tactics, they simply won't work. So let's get back to our question here and break it down. This is a fairly typical synthesis question you might expect at the end of the aromatic chemistry section in your course. Most of you will cover aromatic chemistry in the first half of the second semester, but I've also seen curricula where it's covered in the end of the first semester or even at the very end of the second semester. It kind of depends on the textbook you guys are using and your instructor's preferences. If you haven't covered the reactions of aromatic compounds yet, it's not that big of a deal. Bookmark this video and come back to it later. But for now, you can still learn about the question structure and why common test-taking strategies just simply don't work with the ACS exams. But I digress. Uh, here we have an aromatic compound, benzene, in this case. And we are going to be adding two groups to it. We have the nitro group on top and we have this acyl group on the bottom. We add the nitro group to benzene via the nitration reaction, which uses the concentrated HNO3, nitric acid, and sulfuric acid. And the other group is going to be added to our aromatic ring via the friedel crafts acylation reaction, which uses the corresponding acyl chloride and aluminum chloride for the catalysis. So if I look at my answer options, I can see right away that my option B and my option D, they do not have the correct reagents, so I'm simply going to cross them out right away. And this is where the first big difference between the ACS exams and your typical multiple choice exam written by somebody who doesn't know how to properly write the, uh, you know, multiple choice exams comes. Even though we've eliminated two options right away, we have another two options with the correct reagents. So what are we going to do in this case? Are we going to guess? Well, certainly not. While you should be able to reduce most ACS questions from four to two options, it is still a good idea to make an educated decision rather than simply guess at this point. And that's where another ACS trick comes forward. You see, typically ACS questions going to test two concepts at the same time. Of course, it's not going to be true for every single question that you are going to see, but in my experience administering those exams and seeing many versions of the test when I was a college instructor myself, it is true for the majority of the questions. So here, the first concept that is being tested is the reactions themselves. I've outlined those on top. The second concept here is your knowledge of the details and limitations of those reactions. And the important limitation here is that the friedel crafts reactions will fail with the deactivated aromatic compounds. So if we first add our nitro group over here, which is a very strong deactivating group, that means that we won't be able to do friedel crafts and add our acyl group afterwards, which means that I have to add my acyl group first and only then do our nitration reaction. So that means that option A, where I first do the nitration, will simply not work because the second step, where I do the acylation after nitration, well, that one will simply fail, which means that I can now cross that option as well, and the correct answer in this question is going to be option C. And of course, which concepts are 
being tested will depend on the question itself. Even with something as straightforward as, let's say, I don't know, nomenclature, you can expect two layers of complexity. So remember, if it feels like there are two correct answers, or maybe there are no correct answers at all based on what you're seeing on the question, it means that you have forgotten something. I'll be adding more dedicated ACS videos as the semester progresses, so make sure you subscribe to the channel or you might miss those. As always, thank you for watching. Boop the like button if you learned something new today, it tells me that my videos are useful to you and it helps with the YouTube algorithm. Leave me your questions and feedback in the comments below and I'll see you next time!